Hello dear chess friends and uh, welcome to our new video. In that video I will present, I think that is the game of century, maybe the most shocking game of previous century, maybe not the best according to the quality, but uh, definitely game which shocked uh, the chess world. Uh, game was played between Larsen and Spassky in 1970. Uh, game was played in uh, so-called match match of the century, so match of Soviet Union against the rest of the world. Of course, Spassky was the reigning world champion and uh, he was the leading board of Soviet Union. He played on the board number one. And in the, in the team of rest of the world, uh, Bobby Fischer, of course, uh, accordingly to his reasons, wanted to play on the board one. And uh, on the other hand, Larsen claimed he has better results than Fischer in past years against Soviet players, so he insisted to play on the board one. And uh, I think Fischer very wisely decided... Uh, to allow Bent Larsen to play on board one. Well, simply, Fischer felt, and somehow entire chess world felt that Fischer would be exactly the next challenger to world reigning champion Boris Paskin. And Fischer decided, okay, uh, let Larsen play on the board one. I will still hide my adits against uh, Spassky, and uh, it is not yet time to, uh, to have conflict with him uh, on the chess board and uh, simply uh, I don't know journalists and fans worldwide expected maybe match will not be hold at all because you know Fischer was uh, very strict in his uh, claimings but uh, surprisingly Fischer agreed to play on board number two and let's see Larsen on board number one played against Pasky b3 and after e5, knight uh, bishop b2, knight c6, normal developing move, c4, and now already Fischer deviates instead of e3 and uh, maybe double fianchetto. He played c4, and after knight f6, so strange, knight f3. That's provocative move, and uh, simply uh, white invites black to play e4, and of course. Spassky, who was the world champion, takes the challenge, e4, knight e4, and black gets one more tempo by attacking the knight with bishop c5. If knight retreats, okay, that would be a waste of time, and black would have excellent play with d5, as you can see. Better development control over the center, castling is preparing, and black already has excellent position. On other hand, uh, there is possibility to take, and Larsen decided to take, and now much better option is D takes. If Black plays B takes, that will somehow slow the rhythm of play. Yes, Black will prepare D5, making pawn center, but White can take pawn center immediately with maybe uh, E3 preparing D4, maybe immediately D4, you know. So, uh, in all cases, Black will just slow down his um, his development with taking with b pawn. Taking with d is uh, more logical. Queen gets open now, bishop gets open and black can easily finish development preparing maybe even a long casting. Once again white played e3, a bit strange. Bishop f5. Well black targets square d3 preventing white moves like d3 or d4. Black will be ready to take Ampassan and to uh, get that pawn for free. After bishop f5, white played queen c2. As we can see, white prepares maybe to castle even long side. And black, of course, queen e7. Bishop e2, normal development move, casting, and now first horrible mistake allowed by uh, Bent Larsen. Uh, we can see that he wanted maybe to advance h3 g4, but he didn't want in that case to have pawn f2 backward. 
So he's sure he will castle show along and he want already to get expanding on the king side and that's why he played first f4. Using the fat black cannot take because queen f5 takes with check. He wants to use the fact that pawn is pinned and now he wants to prepare h3, g4 and so on with long casting that will maybe give him initiative on the king side. But Spassky's reaction is so classy. There is no white expanding on the king side because black has ultra dangerous possibility in g4. What's the plan? Well, as first, black opens black uh, queen's diagonal to deliver the check. As second, there are motives on e3. Well, black immediately tries to sacrifice knight or maybe even better the bishop with crashing position in front of white king, preventing castling on both sides. Now white, after the castling, would be faced with another problem. There is that shocking move. Taking with queen will cost him a queen. Taking with knight will do the same. Now even bishop e3 uh, can win the game. Let me show you. And after, and after king h1, there is knight h2 with astonishing attack after queen h4 in some moment. But more evident is knight e3 attacking the queen after queen moves. Let's say there. Okay, black will take even this. After this, there is queen h4 and white cannot avoid the mate on h2, on f2 very soon. He can delay just with this g3, but queen h2 mates soon. So horrible, horrible play allowed by um, Bent Larsen. He didn't castle and that helped. Uh, to chess public to enjoy even more beautiful combination which will happen. Uh, Carson, uh, Larsen plays, sorry, uh, another weakening is on the board. Larsen played g3 and of course Spassky continues attacking h5. He who has better control of the center it's allowed to play on the flank. Spassky better controls the center, he has safe king, he has better development, he has even more space. All that factors simply uh, give him right to attack. h5 and h3. That was White's idea. Hoping Knight will return. But now there is the point of Spassky's inventive play. He proved that he is world champion with great reason. And uh, h4 happened. Absolutely crashing. What can White do? gh loses after queen takes h4 with... Uh, devastation there is mate in one after king f1 there is losing the queen after king d1 so all black pieces are uh co-working and uh, they just participate in that yeah that's already mate attack actually attack directly on opponent king placed in the center white must take now g h takes g Rook g1 and now all roads lead to Rome. There is queen h4 possibility. There is also bishop e3 possibility to open d5 and later to attack. The most important white's problem is communication between his, between his queen side and king side is possible only via d1 square. So practically that uh, so much advanced pawn e4 practically uh, has split the white army on two uh, disjunctive uh, disjunctive parts and uh, white simply was not able to to regroup but Spassky decided not to go for bishop e3 not to go for queen h4 he played the first move and amazing move rook h1 what can white do well after rook f1 there is g2 and white is evidently losing after king f1 okay Queen h4 with mate in few moves, white cannot escape. He must take, but now g2 with the tempo. As you can see, black has so tight corridor where h4 square, where all his pieces just invade. Even pawn uses h4, h4 to get, uh, to get uh, this g2 dangerous position. White must play rook f1. If rook g1, there is queen h4, check and win after queen h1 mate will be uh, very soon so after rook f1 here once again check king d1 and taking
after bishop f1 takes there will be so beautiful mate as you can see all black pieces somehow did that maneuver via h4 square to invade so beautiful position spassky resigned after uh, after move uh gf1 yeah in that moment what uh, uh sorry larsen resigned after move g takes h g takes f1 uh that was move number 17 so can you believe how that was shameful that uh surprisingly as a bomb uh shocked entire chess world you know uh the player the challenger who insisted to play on the board one uh has defeated only in 17 moves with white pieces but not defeated destroyed and the point is he was not lost in 17 moves no he was lost right after black played knight g4 in that moment after 10 moves with white pieces white is already completely lost so i hope dear chess friends you enjoyed that game that was uh real real i think game of previous century uh who just uh caused some earthquake in the in the chess world and has great echo simply that helped to fisher to uh feel more comfortable and more uh let's say to feel himself more ready to fight against paski because after that game he was sure he's number one out of uh out of Soviet Union and of course entire chess world out of Soviet Union started recognizing him as a real pretender to the chess crown and uh, simply after that game West started supported uh, namely Bobby Fischer and uh, with that strong support finally two years after he dethroned Spassky in their famous world match played in Reykjavik once again hope you can learn something from that game i hope you enjoyed that video and you will enjoy our next videos dear chess friends see you soon bye bye